Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And praise the Lord once again. Uh, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, what a wonderful day to rejoice. What a wonderful day to give God the glory, to give him the praise, to give him what is due to his name. I don't know about you, but I'm excited again another day because any time that I have breath in my body, any time that I can hear or, or see or feel or taste or any of those things, I, I'm, I just feel blessed. And I don't know about you, even in the darkest hours, even in the times that we go through, uh, I still give thanks for the Bible tells us, the word tells us that in all things, give thanks. So I'm grateful, I'm thankful to the Lord for what he has done and what he will do. We don't see the things that he's about to do. And so let's not give up. Let's not give in yet. I mean, and never. But let's continuously bless the Lord. Hey, I'm bringing glad tidings from the House of Prayer Evangelistic Church, where we are a church who loves everyone and anyone who comes is family. And we are people who truly believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we just wanted to bring glad tidings from our pastor, Bernard Crawford Jr. and our first lady, uh, prophetess, evangelist, Trina Crawford. And so we just want to say thank you. We want to bless you for those who have always, who are tapping in, those who are, who are um, listening to this, this broadcast, those who are, who are um, even when there's being shared and you're taking your time out to listen to the word that God has been giving us and bringing us here at House of Prayer, we thank God for you. Um, I want to say a few things and we'll get into this word. Um, yesterday, we, I was able to officiate a, another wedding. And um, so I wanted to give shout outs to Dexter and Latasha Kearney. Um, bless you. And we're praying for you the many more, many more anniversaries and that you will continue to strive in your marriage. Also, I want to um, we want to talk about. Oh, well, another thing I wanted to do also is, is um, to bring is to shout out my friend Tony Jones and his family. Um, I'm, you know, our deepest condolences also to your mother, who was a beautiful, wonderful woman. Um, and so um, so to Tony and, and Mimi and uh, J.R. and Junebug and all the other family members, um, even Renault, you know, hey, man, we love you. Um, our condolences is to you and your family and those who have lost. And to my good friend Julius Frog, to losing his son, uh, we're still praying for you and your bereavement. And even um, brother, uh, you know, Melvin Brown, um, I know you're still going through, brother. And so we're holding you up as as we speak right now for you and your family. So others that are going through, uh, I haven't, if I haven't heard or don't know, or I might have, you know, sometimes things slip my mind. We're praying for you. We're praying for all the families that we know and those that we don't know in this, in America. Um, so today we want to talk about, uh, we want to talk about abuse. We're going to talk about, and that's not my subject, but we want to talk about it because this month, we're standing against domestic violence, and uh, we're also standing for cancer awareness. And so that's what I have my, my pink on. Got my pink shirt on, representing with Lonnie Bush um, for the, that walk that we did, but uh, concerning cancer and breast cancer a month. But as we talk about it, today's, my, today's lesson is leaving things behind, leaving the past behind. And, um, and, and this is one of, it's a hard subject to talk about because many of people, when you go through and you've had a lot of things that come against you, it's hard to get away from the past. And so this lesson again, leaving the past behind. I, I can't hit on everything because this is such a lesson that's so long, but I want to give you some of the details or some of the nuggets, that, the things that we can do. And what God has shown us or what we can do that to, to help us ease away from the past. Now, this disclaimer I'm giving out, uh, I, I have to say that um, there are certain things, some things that we do have to do. We have to get counseling. And when I say counseling, why is counseling? I'm talking about I, I would always advise Christian counseling. If you're going through, if you, you've been abused, if you've gone through, if you've gone through any of anything, you know, that has been abusive, that's been hurt, it's always good to have counsel, but wise counsel, like the scripture tells us. But I will say Christian counsel because it always points back to the cross, which is Jesus Christ. So my disclaimer to you is, is I'm not able to hit on all of those things concerning counseling. But the one thing that we will talk about is Jesus Christ, which is the foundation of healing. 
So as we talk today and before, as I get ready to pray, again, God bless you. I thank you. Um, I, I'm Marvina. We love you. Bless you. And, and uh, T, uh, TC, we bless you also, sister. Um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you again for another opportunity to be used as your vessel. Lord, I, I count myself as nothing, Lord, but I count you as everything. And so I just ask that you would stand before me, that man will hear your voice, that they will see your face and not mine, that they may hear a solid word, a clear word that will dig right deep into their marrows of their bones, that they may take it and accept it and receive it, and that they may go and tell someone else about your goodness. Lord, we thank you for all the things that you've done. We thank you for this edifice, this building that we're in, and just life period. And we thank you for what you have done and will do in today's service. We thank you and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Again, leaving things, leaving the past behind. Now, let me say this. Nine times out of ten, I have to say this, you've probably met a person, at least one person in your life, who loves to live in the past. I know I have. I've met many people, and for some reason, they just can't get past the past. <laughs> they can't get to the future because they're stuck in the past. And so day after, and, and day after day, they continuously revisit the old wounds. They hold on to the past tragedies. And so all of these things begin to build up, and they remember in great detail about it. Every time, and then every time they talk about being mistreated. And so I don't know about you, but this could be you. This could be me. But sometimes we are holding on, and I'm not telling you that it's easy to let go or to release. I'm not going to tell you that. But what I am telling you is some things that we're holding on to is because we won't release. It's because we have an outlet. We have a person who we can lay this burden down onto. We have a person who we can give it all to, but we sometimes we choose to waddle in it. This is what I'm talking about today, about leaving things behind. We, t we choose to waddle in it and stay in it. Some people don't want to stay in it. Some people do because sometimes we like people to, to hug on us and to love on us and to do it. People would do that anyway. You don't have to go through for people to love on you, but sometimes we feel like we need that for somebody to hug and to love on us. Well, these people often struggle to find meaningful relationships because of it. And since they're haunted by memories, or they, it's hard for them to trust people, and, and especially those who have abused them at one time. So what happens is things that happened 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, a year ago, a week ago, a day ago, a lot of times, even when we have come to a place where we feel like we should get past it, we won't allow it to go away because we're still struggling to hold on and we're allowing it to hunt us because we won't release it. We won't give it to nobody. We won't even speak to another person because we're afraid how we'll be judged. So I understand all this, but again, I'm going to point you to the person who can help us in this situation if we allow him to. Look, not only is it hard for certain people like this to trust people, but it's hard for them to trust God. And so this is why I'm talking about this today. From their perspective, they can only see God in a different, with a different answer or a different question. And prayer sometimes seems like they're not being answered. Are you that person today? Have you gone through this situation? Well, let me, let me say something to you. Just because you didn't get a yes or a no does not mean it wasn't answered. Sometimes we have to constantly continue to pray. We have to continue to lay on our face because it's just not time yet. Sometimes it's not a no. Some, that's what happens sometimes. We think it's a no. It's just a not yet. And it's not because he doesn't feel your pain or doesn't see where you are. And I know it because we've all gone through. It's because there's a certain time and there's certain things that have to happen for us to ease, for him to ease us through. If, he allow, if we break through at a certain time, sometimes we'll continue or we'll jump back harder than we was. We'll come back into that same place. So sometimes we have to go through a buildup and a cutting. I always say, I give you the analogy about working out. Sometimes what you're working out, it hurts so bad. But the hurting is a buildup because it's tearing and it's cutting and it's cutting the muscle down and it's breaking you down to build you back up. And so when God, when you are going through certain things, it's not unto death. God is not taking you through this certain thing for you to go through this thing to die. 
He's bringing us through these certain things because he's going to need us to help somebody else. We're so busy in, in it hot in us that we don't think about other people. We can't think about nobody else because it's so much on us. But think about it. If you've gone through, you think no one else has gone through this? Sometimes what we've gone through, is people have gone through 10 times worse than us. But we can't get away from that thing. And again, I have to say this. I'm not knocking. I'm not, I'm not downgrading the pain. I'm not knocking the abuse. I'm not knocking what you have gone through. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is, is we have a person. We have this being who loves us more than we can ever imagine. And we just need to release it. We need to come to a place. And I'm praying that somebody's listening today that they may take this and help somebody else. Because sometimes they may not hear God right now. But if you are a symbol or a vessel of God, they'll listen to you. And then you'll be the person who will direct them back to the Father. That's what we're here for. That's our whole, the whole method of me today is that I might help somebody else. Hey, the person that needs to hear this might not hear this right now. But somebody on here listening today, my brother Cedric, I mean, my boy said Darts, what's up? What's going on with you, bro? Um, this, you might be able to help somebody. Somebody might be able to help somebody today with this word or with a message or just a simple scripture you might hear something and say you know what i think i'm gonna pass this on deuce you might be able to help somebody today yeah i'm calling you out brother you might be able to help somebody with this simple word so when we look at today's word one of the things that reminds me i'm reminded and and it's 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 the 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 funny thing about this is uh about this message is we're talking about abuse. We're talking about mistreatment. We're talking about hurt. We're talking about, I'm talking about relationship. We're talking about, look, I'll be honest. And, and I'm going to say this before I get into this word. I was one without even knowing. I, I, I know that I was an abuser. Now, when I say this, I'm not talking about I put my hands on a person. I didn't verbally, but I hurt many people's hearts. I remember hurting my parents' hearts. I remember hurting them in such a way because I, I was a kid who they looked at and thought that was doing the right thing. I was going to school and I was trying to do the right thing, but I got in such a way in the streets and I started doing my little griminess and started doing my things. And I would never forget the time that I, I got in such a trouble where the police, the feds was looking for me. I remember they came into the house. I remember just some crazy stuff had happened just for being silly. And thank goodness that the outcome wasn't as worse as it could have been, but I got in trouble. And when I did, I'll never forget that all this stuff happened. My auntie was living above me in these apartments. And when the police came in to get me, the, my parents were down there before, while the police was coming in. And when the police had came in, I looked at my father when he was bringing me out and some of my friends. And I looked at my father in the face and my mother in the face. And I can see my father. My father's a, a hard, rough man. And he had red eyes. And so I can see the pain in his eyes. I already knew my mom's was hurt, but I can tell that I really hurt their heart when I did that. And so that right there alone can be a hurt that people have gone through, even with their children. We always think of the abuse and we think of the other things, but that right there was a hurt. I also hurt women, not abusive with the hands or verbally. It's because I wasn't ready to commit. And so I hurt many hearts. And so when I came to salvation, this is what turned me around. When God, when, when I was, when I opened myself up and God came into my life, I was able to go and I was calling people and I was letting them know when I seen them out, hey, I'm sorry, I apologize for what I've done. And some people probably couldn't get past it. Some people might not have still got past it, but I tried my hardest and I'm still learning. I'm not there yet, but I'm still learning that if you hurt a person or if you go, you know, somebody, if you feel like, you know, you've done it, you try to help somebody. So today I'm hoping that this might help a person that might have hurt somebody or hurt your parents or gone through or even going through this, that you may release that thing and say, you know what? I'm going to forgive them because I need to be free. I'm going to give my life to Christ. And even if I can't forgive them right now, the one thing that I need to do is first go to God. I think about the prodigal son. And when I think about the prodigal son, it's way different than what every, what, when we think about the abuse and all these other things. But what the prodigal son did, and because of the time, that we, the, the time restraint that we have, I'm just going to kind of break it down. So the prodigal son, him and his brother, he was the youngest of the brothers. And he decided that he wanted to get his inheritance in advance, which was unheard of. 
And so he went to his father. Now, usually when the inheritance is given down and passed down, it goes to the oldest first. It goes, it goes to the first child first. And then whoever's next and next and next. Well, the second child, which usually it goes to the first, decided, I want my inheritance. So he comes to the father. The father says, okay, I'll split and give you your inheritance. So he cut it down, gave him his money, gave it to him. He went out into the world and he squandered all the money. He went into the prostitution rings. He went out and he did everything that you can think of that most kids would do when they get money and have and, and with no wisdom. So he goes out and he just swanders, gets so crazy. Now, mind me, the background of them is they don't eat pork. They don't eat certain foods. They don't do certain things in their customs. He got so low from the prostitution to all the friends and spending all his money that he decided that it went so bad that he was in there and he was feeding pigs. And so he started, it got so bad that he had no food, he had nothing to eat, that he began to eat where the pigs ate. What are you talking about? Why does this have anything to do with abuse? Because this same person, when we go back to the prodigal son, this same person went out and he swandered and he hurt himself and he also hurt his family for what he had did. So when we talk about abuse and we talk about all this, I'm putting everything in one place. I'm putting the people who have gone through, I'm putting the people who have done things to, to hurt others, but also a person who hurt others and hurt himself in the midst of it all. And the one thing that makes us all become in the same group is, is the Lord. That's the one fine tune. That's the one thing that we need to bring us back for us to come from the pain, to come from the hurt, to come from the suffering. So when we look at him, even though he, he did what he did and, and people were like, well, that's different. No, it's not different because he squandered and it got so bad that he affected himself. He hurt himself. He took himself to the worst place that he ever thought he would be. But also he hurt his father. And his brother and family because it's not just that. It's an embarrassment to the family of what he did. But one of the things that happen, even when we abuse or we hurt a person or we've been hurt, God is there to pull us through. So in the scripture in, in Luke 15, uh, 15 to 17, it says, but when he finally came to his senses, we're talking about the prodigal son. And, and, and this is talking. And he said. How many of my father's hired men have more than enough food while I am dying here for hunger? So he had to think about it because his father, they were pretty well off. They had money. They did very well. And so he found himself in, a bad, in such a bad place. But he had enough wisdom after going through all of this. He said, you know what? I need to go back to the father. That's who we all need. Is the Father. We're talking about the Lord. We're talking about Jesus Christ. We need to go back to that person that can resolve all the pain for us and others. Even when we need to pray for others that have hurt us, he is the one we need to go to. He realized he was reaping the, the bitter fruit of his poor choices. If he stayed in his current path, his life would surely continue to wallow in the pig pen of yesterday's faults, failures, and hurts. Look, we know that everyone that has suffered tragedies or hurt did not ask to be hurt or be abused. But one thing I know to be, to be true is the turning point can't come until you submit to the power of God's love and let him turn it all into a new direction. We need him. We need the Lord to turn our past around. We got to leave the past. I still got people that come up. Um, I had a, a young lady, and, and maybe she rest in peace, that was still mad at me for years ago. And, I, and I, you know, it hurt my heart to know, you know, that she had passed away. But it was just, it was sad that, that people are still, while I was free, like I was still moving on. And, and th not that that's okay, but other people are sitting hurt because they wouldn't allow God in. You know, or they couldn't free themselves. And so I'm hoping that we don't waddle in the pig pen. I'm praying that we don't stay in that place where we are when we need to leave the past behind. Now, again, it's not easy just leaving it, but there is a counselor. There is one that we can go to that can help us get to the place that we need to get to. 
Look, if you know someone who is living in the past, who has not yet felt the embrace of God's, God's loving power, let's look at these few principles that we have today that can help us through getting there. One of the first things that can help us, and this is for all of us, even as believers, we have to go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But when we say any man is in Christ, that means that is one who is grafted, joined to him by faith in, his, in our Savior. And so we have to look at that. So we have to go back, even with us as believers, when we mess up or when we've been hurt, because we've been hurt in the church, let's not play, but we've hurt someone in the church. So when we go through this, we have to go back and we have to join ourselves back to the Father. That's why we have to go to the throne daily. We have to meditate day and night. We have to go back. We can't just get saved and then it's over. We have to go back to the, the, our Savior. And when we do that, it says, and he is, we are a new creature. That means we're reborn, renewed by the Holy Spirit. Old things, which is the previous moral and spiritual condition, have passed away. Behold, new things have come because the spiritual awakening brings a new life. So when we go through this, when we go back to the throne, we know that all things, you know, the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We are now new creations in Christ. And so we renew ourselves daily. We have to because otherwise we become the old man. We'll stay in the old man and we'll stay in the past. Again, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 can help us. And this is something that we need to look at because a lot of times we look at this and we say, okay, this is what we need to get ourselves past or get saved. No, this is to keep us saved. That means we have to continuously go to the throne of grace, continually go to, to the Lord so that we can stay in his path. The second the principle that will help us today is, look, right now, we, we are told not to call, on, call to mind or ponder things of the past. This is in Isaiah 43 and 18. Do not remember the former things or ponder the things of of the past. In other words, let's not embrace the past. Let's not keep this past thing in us. How do we do that? How do we get past that? Philippians 3, 13 through 14 says, brothers and sisters, I do not consider that I have made it my own yet, but one thing I do is forgetting what lies behind me and reaching forward to what lies ahead. So which means I have chose, you have to make a choice. That's the first thing that we have to do. We need to choose Christ. And as we choose Christ, choose to let it go. That's the one thing. Even though in our hearts, even though the natural flesh is saying, I can't. Uh, it's hard for me. I'm, it's this thing. I'm bitter. I don't want to let go. I'm mad. I want to hurt somebody. I'm telling you, make the choice of Christ first. And when you make the choice for, of Christ, that means you have opened yourself up. And when you open yourself up to Christ, then allow him to turn that thing around. So when you begin to release that thing and you say, look, I'm done with that, then you will begin to move forward. And you'll say, look, I know I'm not there yet, but I want to be there. I want to forgive. I want to release the hurt because that hurt will kill you. That pain will take you out of here. So we have to know that if we make the choice of Christ, then we have a better, we have a better way. So as we look at the same scripture, it says that, and I press on towards the goal to win the heavenly prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. When we talk about heavenly, when, I, when we look at the scripture, we, sometimes we think about moving forward and we're moving towards the prize of, of the high calling of God. We're looking about the things on the earth. Well, the things that we want is heaven. We want the things that are heaven because we are building our, we're building all of our treasures into heaven. And so as we release the hurt and the pain and all of the things that we have endured, we are now launching ourselves towards heaven. So that when we leave up out of here, we have built ourselves a place and, and treasure that is before us that we may, when we enter into heaven, that we get to see the glory, glory and, and the heavenly, heavenly hosts and all the things that God has for us. But we have to leave the past behind. Again, 
I gave you my disclaimer. It's not the easiest thing, but if we choose to want to get past this, man, you'll, you'll feel way better. You'll see the blessings that God has for you. Number three, it's my last thing. Um, no matter what kinds of difficult seasons we've been facing, God wants to make a roadway into a wilderness. Let me say this again. A roadway in the, I'm sorry, a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Listen carefully. I'm about to do a new thing. Not the will, not, not will spring us forth. We'll do, but it says, I'm sorry. Will you not be aware of it? I will even put a road in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. And this, this particular scripture, I love it. This is in Isaiah uh, 43, 19. So he's, the Lord is letting us know that even when we see the woods, and, and that's all we can see is the trees and the woods and everything that's blocking He'll put a road right in between it. In other words, he'll move all of those things to the side. He'll do like he did in Exodus when he did for Moses when, when they, they poured at the Red Sea. That's what he wants to do in our lives. When we have hurt and we have pain and we have all these things, he wants to be able to move those things to the side so you can move forward. That's what he's doing in our lives. But we have to be open to receive it. Look, if you got a closed hand, he can't put nothing in it. And so that's what happens. You, he, you, we want something. We want to get past it, but we won't open the hand so God can put it in there. And so this is where we are today. And so if you're hurting and you're holding on to this pain, God is saying, open up so that I can take that thing from you. So I can release that from you so that you can be free. That's what we are. We like men or women running up a hill, a steep hill with a backpack of bricks on. Well, guess what? You're going to have a long road trying to run up this hill with these bricks. God is saying, look, take the backpack off. I'm going to release this thing from you so you can get to the top of the hill where I'm needing you to be. This is where we are today. So when we look at this, he said, and I'll make rivers. I'll move the desert and put rivers in the desert, that dry place that you're in. That hurting place, I will wet in that place. I will make it so that you don't have to endure that same pain anymore. This is what the Lord is showing us today. And so I'm, I'm praying that someone today is listening. I'm praying somebody hears this message because we're enduring the pain and we're going through extra pain that we don't, that's not needed. I'm not listening. I'm not knocking again, dogging out those who are been through and people who are going through and people that are in pain right now because someone is saying, man, you don't understand. No, what I do understand is I don't understand your pain, but I understand Jesus and I understand what he can do and how he can resolve that pain that you are going through. When time is spent meditating on these wonderful promises from God, the devil's pig pen can be left behind. And his eyes can be open to experience, and your eyes can be open to experience the power of God's purpose and his blessings. As I close, past sins and past hurts of, of all of them have been covered by the blood of Jesus. And if you know someone living in the past, please encourage them to forget what has happened in the past so that their beginning can start today. Again, I'm, I'm praying for those that's going through domestic violence. I'm praying for those that have uh, going through the hurt of le losing a loved one. Those that have loved, who uh, lost a loved one that's suffering through cancer. Um, someone who is just hurting right now mentally, physically, spiritually. Someone has gone through what we call a spiritual hurt. In other words, a church hurt. Somebody has gone and has experienced this thing. And right now we're praying for you. And we're praying that you would release that thing unto God that you may be free. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that it will never come back void. Lord, we're asking right now that you would just spread your hands out and that you would hug those that are going through right now. The ones that are going through bereavement, the ones who are going through hurt, the ones who are going through pain, the one who has been molested, the one who has been abused verbally and mentally and physically, the one who is, is standing in a place of not understanding where they are but just hurt. 
And Lord, we're asking that you would begin to resolve this thing that they're going through. Lord, we know you're the only one that can do it. We're asking that you would begin to break up that fallow ground and begin to touch their hearts that you would remove and peel back and do a surgery on their hearts that they may open up and receive you into their lives. Lord, you, you told us in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 that you said the old man has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. If you are a new, you are a new creator, a new creation in you. If we begin to give our lives over to you. Lord, you sent your son, your only begotten son, that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And so we thank you for that. But today, Lord, we're asking that you would just comfort those that are going through bereaving this time of bereavement. And those who need you and those that don't believe they need you, touch them right now. We thank you and we love you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.